One of the most common ways to go out and begin learning a new language is to go out and install an app. Makes sense, they're fun, organized, and easily accessible. But here's the question. Do language apps actually work? And if so, which one should you choose? In my opinion, yes, they can work with the right process in place. And second, the best app to choose is simply whatever option that you enjoy using the most. Now, whether you're currently using an app or thinking about it, in this video, I would like to share with you three very common mistakes that most people make when using an app to learn, including myself, that will only set you up to fail over the long term. So let's avoid these, shall we? To demonstrate the following mistakes and solutions, I will be using the app Duolingo as I personally find it fun, engaging, and easy to use. However, these tips can be applied to any app that you use. So don't freak out and close the video if you're using another app. I'm looking at you. Mistake number one, focusing on fast progress. Now, one of the easiest mistakes to make when using an app to learn is to focus on fast progress rather than taking the time to really dig in and analyze the details. Now, I get it. An app looks like a game. And what do we do when playing games? We beat them as fast as possible, of course. Keep in mind that a language learning app is not a game. It's more like an interactive textbook presenting you important information, so it must be played differently. By focusing on speed only, you will quickly find that a few sections later, what you thought you had already learned has sadly been forgotten. So how can we solve this problem? Slow down and analyze. Forget about beating the current section as quickly as possible. Slow down, take the time to go through the provided tips within the app while also taking note of the new vocabulary and phrases as you play. Yes, this process will take you longer and your friends may laugh at your slow progress, but in the end, you will be the one who is laughing as you may just be the only one who has actually retained the information. So don't skip this. Now keep in mind that you don't have to note down every single word and phrase that comes at you. It's okay to just focus on a set number of words or phrases to begin. And once you master those, come back and repeat this process until you master them all. And with that in mind, let's move on to mistake number two, failing to review. Most apps are sectioned off into fairly narrowly focused sections, covering one single topic at a time. Now, as a result, this minimizes the chance of you to review previous terms that you have learned as they're no longer currently relevant. Now, from an app's design perspective, this approach makes a lot of sense. Keeping an organized library of content for the user to navigate through is ideal. However, as a user, to truly retain the information, you're going to need to practice it on a consistent basis. And as stated earlier, most users are overly focused on forward progress through the app and not taking the time to reflect and go back on what they had previously learned. So check out this solution. Implement a review strategy. The easiest solution to this problem is to simply go back and play through older sections of the app on a consistent basis. However, another method that I find much more effective and fun is to construct an external review process upon completing each section. Here's how it works. First, while reviewing the section content, write out the most challenging words and phrases either on handmade cue cards or using an app like Anki. Second, and most importantly, schedule in just five minute sections of time to review these cards on a fairly regular basis. This will set you up to retain the information over the long term. And speaking of memorization, let's now get into the third and final mistake. Memorizing, not understanding. There's a clear difference between memorizing an answer and understanding an answer. It's easy to be fooled into thinking that you know all the phrases and vocabulary within a section when the answers are usually glowing right in front of your very eyes. As a result, your brain never really has a chance to fully engage or challenge itself to come up with an answer unguided. Rather, you're mostly just scanning through a list of options and choosing the one that you remember was correct the last time. So, how can we engage our brains and actually learn why these answers are correct and how they work? Here's a solution. Close the app. 
What? Yes, you heard me. Close it. If you cannot easily repeat the words without reading them off, then simply put, you don't know them. Your goal should be to be able to understand each phrase and its structure well enough that not only can you easily recall it, but you can also modify them into new phrases that are actually useful to you, aside from the generic examples provided. There is a dog. So, to achieve this, I suggest you follow this technique. Choose at least two to three phrases from each section and take the time to really deconstruct them. Chart out each word within the phrase and label how all the pieces fit together. Once you have it all mapped out, follow the grammatical structure to build new phrases to start implementing into your weekly routine, in real life, without any tips in front of you. And that, my friends, is how to use an app to truly learn a language. If you don't believe me, I challenge you to implement these tips into your routine for just a single week. If by the end of that week, you don't feel way more confident playing through your chosen app and using the language in your day-to-day -day life, well, honestly, I'd be quite surprised. So leave me a comment below and let me know how it went for you. Also, I'm quite curious which app have you chosen and why? Before ending this video, I'd also like to mention that if you're currently using Duolingo or thinking about it, I have a series on this channel where myself and my Japanese mentor slash wife will guide you through each section, ensuring that you understand all the details along the way. I'm sure you'll find it very useful even if you're not using Duolingo. Now, if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, I would greatly appreciate it if you would share it, click that like button, and definitely subscribe to this channel so you won't miss out on any future videos, including all kinds of cool study tips and future Japanese lessons, including some even filmed in Japan. Ryo, Ryo. R -I -O. Mm, Ryo. Ryo. Arigato gozaimasu for watching this video, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.